meditation and live wisely. That is our series. How to live? That is our series. Live wisely. So living wisely in our Eastern wisdom says mind cannot live wisely. Because mind carries billions of impressions and uh, instinct and impulsive reaction. So we cannot be sure that this mind can ever live wisely. Even, you know, great genius and the calm, those people who are maintaining that poise, they can flare up. It's an automatic urge of impulse and instinct anytime. <laughs> So our master says, no, real self. If you think, speak, and act out of the real self, which is pure consciousness, that is all pervading, that is of the nature of the peace, happiness, love, and wisdom, it has no opposites. Absence of instinct and impulses are there. So that is also known as the state of being. So there are two words. One is the state of being, and other is the state of becoming. The state of becoming is always organized, regulated, and acted by either the mind or the intellect. But the state of being is there. Existence is there. The space is there. How can you harm the space? Maximum, maximum you can cover the space with a skyscraper and you demolish it. But this nothing happens to the state, uh, space. So that is the nature of the real self. So the entire goal of meditation or mindfulness to allow the mind to settle in that state of the being. Then you need not to worry even about impulsive and instinctive reaction because the mind has already marked. That was the nature of the Buddha, that was the nature of Krishna, that was the nature of Jesus, that was the nature of nature, the state of the being. That is the ultimate goal of meditation or mindfulness. So there are two, two things. Living wisely means living in meditation, thinking in meditation, thinking out of meditation, speaking out of meditation. Ah, uh, yeah, the state of the being has no trace of impulse. And, and living unwisely means the mind has taken over me. The mind works on me. If you are hungry, can I eat for you? Answer is no. Can I sleep for you? If you are feeling sleepy and your sleep is disturbed, can I sleep for you? How dare your mind says, because Philippe is suffering, I am also suffering. <laughs> <laughs> I heard correctly. How dare you say? How? I should move with kindness and compassion. Okay, my dear honey, take care. Huh? We can repeat again and again, Philippe, calm down, do something, take care of yourself. It is important. It's your life. I cannot live your life. That much we can say. But how dare you say that you are also suffering? It means you have a pain, then I should also have a pain. Right. <laughs> you see, that is the meaning of living wisely. If my near and the dear ones are suffering, say for example, huh, my honey is crying. Oh, I can tell you the real life example. My honey had a lot of gum surgery on the lower teeth <laughs> and she has been crying. So should I also cry to minimize her pain? If out of compassion, what is compassion? Come uh, on, out of compassion means that I should start crying. <laughs> uh, 
Compassion means the love is there inside and love expressed is compassion. And I have an emotional dependence means an intense attachment with someone. And if that someone is crying, so I will also start crying. So there's a difference between emotional dependence and compassion. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I heard it. I said, no, I will take up this topic. <laughs> so what happens that living wisely simply means I'm living in a little higher awareness, which is available to me. But if I think that it is not available, then I have to do the practice of mindfulness and meditation. Then I can start living in a higher awareness. That higher awareness looks at a person who is suffering, it does not move with an emotional dependence. It moves with a compassion. The love is there, concern is there, and that is being expressed outside is compassion. So I told you, if you are hungry, I cannot eat for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> I am suffering. You cannot take my suffering. My mind is crazy. That is why I'm suffering. So I have to take care of this mind, calm down mind. I have to start moving from the from the emotional dependence to the emotional freedom. That emotional freedom is nothing but the mindfulness. You will start living into the higher awareness. Oh, no, no, explain a little bit uh, deeper. Oh, yes, I can see. So there is a lower self-awareness and there is a higher self. So how to understand that? So simple. Look at the tiger. So strong. But they have a limited uh, self-awareness. You have a big case. Huh? Put one uh, sheep there inside. Tiger doesn't know. They will be caught. We know. We are waiting. We have a higher level of self-awareness. See that? Higher level of self-awareness, but that I embrace everything. I'm aware of all, all the events, situation, and the people. But emotional dependence or lower self-awareness means that I'm limited with this. A uh, tiger only sees the uh, sheep, and then he becomes aware all around. He does not know there is a case. He enters, caught. Look at this, lower self-awareness and higher self-awareness. <laughs> I can give him an example. So, so you see that emotional freedom brings me down. I start living with this lower self-awareness. How dare you suffer? <laughs> I should be very clear. OK, well, you are suffering. I can take it. But will you suffer because of the Philly is helping you or helping Philly? It is helping none. <laughs> no. No. If you are suffering and that will help Philip, please suffer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we should be very clear. That is the meaning of living wisely. So lower self-awareness, lower self-awareness puts my mind to work with the impulsive instinct and the habit, and that causes the suffering to me. I have left all the options closed. I don't think with my intellect, so I'm not living wisely. See another example of lower self-awareness and higher self-awareness. Uh, the knowledge in animals are intelligent. All living species are intelligent. You, you, mosquito is sitting on your, 
on your hand to suck the blood. It doesn't sit on the clothes. They're intelligent. But the moment you want to kill it, it flies. They are intelligent. <laughs> but their intellect is controlled by the nature, by the impulses, by the instinct. We have a choice to be free from the impulse, to free from the habits, to free from animals. That is why animals act mechanically. Survival, security, food, and reproduction. We think beyond that. Why? Because we have a higher self awareness. So, can I raise this self awareness to the ultimate that is mindfulness? Means I live with extraordinary awareness. I'm aware of all the events and the things. Nothing is to be attached, nothing is to be emotionally dependent, and then my intelligence, my intellect works independently. I take a right decision and I remain clear. What is that clarity? I'm not worthy of suffering. But when we work through the Emotional dependence, instinctive mind, and impulses, the false eye is created. That false eye says, I'm suffering because you are suffering, my son, my daughter, my mother, my father. At the same time, at the same time, we are 100% aware that I cannot take your suffering. Whether I make a big face, whether I start crying, whether I remain disturbed, it doesn't make any difference to the other. Who is suffering? With whom I am suffering? Mm -hmm. If it works, then then we should, then everyone can do it. So thinking like this means that I am living wisely. Mm -hmm. yep. Thinking in that direction means I'm living wisely. So there is another way to understand. Do animals commit sins? No. Because there is no sinner. They don't have. They don't have an awareness that they are the doer and they enjoy. Tiger kills the sheep or the goat or the deer not to be an enjoyer and a doer just for the sake of food. They see the deer, it means the food is there. Limited self-awareness, they see the apple. They may be sitting on the, tiger is sitting on the mango tree. They see the mango mangoes, they have this limited self-awareness. They, they cannot make a choice that, no, let me eat mango. Why should I be hungry? <laughs> Limited self-awareness. But we have a higher level of awareness. Ah, I didn't get the meat. It's OK. Let me eat mangoes. I'm already on the way. Let me eat veggie. Let me eat this and that. But what I want to say that uh, all these animals, including the mosquito, ant, elephant, tiger, they don't have a doer inside, a sense of doer. I have a sense of dear, that's why I commit sin. Why we go to different restaurants to eat food? Enjoyer is there. Enjoyer means I-ness is there. I-ness means the false eye is there. The false eye says, go to that restaurant, eat that food, so you enjoy the food. But enjoyment is not there in the food. You see, you see the higher self awareness. So, when we have some higher self awareness and we do not move in a right direction, it causes the delusion and delusion causes the suffering. How come? Ha, for example, I like pasta, so I choose a restaurant where the pasta is available 
and I sit on a table and then I enjoy eating pasta. Clear? I get a pleasure by eating pasta. That is what we say. So we miss the main point. What I said, I like pasta, so I eat enjoying pasta. If I dislike pasta, will I be enjoying pasta? That is my limited self-awareness. <laughs> I miss that point in my life. I like, I dislike. Like and dislike comes from a non-thinking and that brings my mind down and that mind starts living with emotional dependence because I like it. Emotional dependence means what? I like it, I dislike it. Then what we do? Then we commit a sin to our body. I like sugar. So hence, without sugar, I cannot eat. So what is the sin? Diabetes. <laughs> that is the cause of that. How simple. You know, you, we, we miss that limited self-awareness pops up in the mind. I like it, hence I eat it. I like this, and hence I love you. That is attachment. That is emotional dependence. <laughs> so then we continue to suffer. That's what... <laughs> and we blame others. You are causing me a suffering. So living wisely means that my intellect is free. Unlike animals, they all are intelligent. They all, all animals are intelligent, but their intellect is not free. They are, their intelligence is automated. How do you know that? You see, last point is very important. Once we contemplate and reflect on this, without practice, we will be in mindfulness. That is what the Master says, Buddha says especially. So let us pay attention. Uh, a tiger cub is born. Or maybe you say that a buffalo's cub is born. The moment they are born, they are out of the womb of the mother. They stand up, they find the breast of the mother, and they start sucking the milk. Look about us, human beings. The mother brings the breast near to the baby. Have you seen it? You, you are a mother, so you know it. <laughs> Look at any animal, mosquito, ant, <laughs> elephant. Their intelligence is limited to survival, food, uh, reproduction and sleep. So the nature has provided them uh, an automated, they have put, you can say, they have put a chip, semiconductor in their brain. And it works mechanically. But since the birth of the human being, because we have to raise and expand our self-awareness and that can also that can only take place by learning so my mother your mother said here is you can suck the milk come on you wet the bed i know i will change it so my brain my mind starts learning so that learning process increases my self-awareness no, but animals are also learning. They, their, their, their level of self-awareness is always limited. Tiger mother cannot teach, come on, we don't have a flesh today. Why don't you eat mangoes? Why don't you eat grass? 
We have, uh, perhaps if I remember, there is only one animal. <coughs> the brown bears. Brown bears in Alaska. When there is a, uh, not autumn, but when there is a spring, they eat a lot of grass. They also eat fish, salmon. They also catch a prey. They are herbivores. But even the white bear, they are not. They are they only eat, they are carnivores. But that intelligence is also automated. Our intelligence is not automated. We can live wisely, we can use the intellect. We can find here is an emotional dependence. I should leave it. The moment I leave that emotional dependence, my intellect, my mind, my brain says, oh, you are right, you know. I cannot ex take the suffering from others. No, no, no. You are my mother and you are suffering. So hence, I should also suffer. I start crying. Well, my crying, my tears is not going to minimize the suffering of anyone. And when I am clear, so why should I have an emotional dependence? Oh. No, so do you mean that we should not be attached? No. So we should remain dry? No. When you drop the emotional dependence, the real love manifests. Then only the real love manifests. And when the love is expressed, that is what the compassion is. Mother whose son died approached to the Buddha. Buddha and mother said, Can you make my son alive? Buddha said, Yes. Because Buddha has to guide her to live wisely. So the mother said, What should I do? Okay, go to every home of this village. I will continue to sit here. Knock the door. Find out. If in any house no one died, I will make your son alive. What a beautiful way. Only Buddha can do it, you know. <laughs> and the mother desperately knocked everyone's every home. No one said that no one died in my home. So when you are moving again and again, your emotional dependence is shattered. When you see thousands of villagers declare that, no, one or the more person have died in my home. And then she returned and she was thinking, oh, then, then my son also died. It's a true, it's a truth. The solution is found. Emotional dependence is gone. She became one of the great uh, monk in the tradition of Buddha. So, last point here is that what? When we understand that uh, we live with a higher self awareness. So we should be very particular, we should be very alert and attentive in our daily living. We should not limit this self-awareness. The moment we limit this self-awareness, I feel the sense of incompleteness. I will definitely feel the sense of anxiety, reaction, anger. Do not come because, the, because of the outer situation. It is because I limit my self-awareness. <clears throat> How can you say that? One time you are angry over Philip, and other time you are attached to the Philip. <laughs> so you are attached again, emotional freedom, but in that emotional dependence. So in that dependence, you don't feel limitedness because pleasure gives us a little expansion. And when we are angry, we have self awareness is limited. The entire journey of mindfulness and meditation is to expand, expand the mind. You, ex you know, like a balloon. 
when we fill the air into the balloon, continue to fill up and burst out, balloon is gone. Same way, we have to expand the mind, continue to expand the mind. Once you expand the mind, reach to a final point, the mind merges into the real self. You enter into the state of being. That state of the being it means, who am I? I have known who am I. So, what happens when I know who am I? So, there are two possibilities. <laughs> then we will do. You <laughs> see the understanding how the Masters takes us to the journey. One that we will find that there is no end of the suffering. Real self is full of suffering. That is one possibility. So, well, if that possibility is true, then I will stop searching for peace and happiness. Why? I have found my real self. Real self is full of suffering. So I'll be happy if I'm suffering because that is my nature. So there is no problem in this journey. Now, second possibility, I discover that in when I merge with the real self, when I move into the highest state of mindfulness, I find that in that state of being is a permanent peace and happiness, love and wisdom. So still I am a winner. That is why the Eastern wisdom says discover yourself. It is a conscious evolution. It is an awakening, realization and transformation it is yoga it is meditation it is mindfulness it is living wise let us close your eyes put on the ventilator <laughs> yeah let's see Turn away the screen. <laughs> Eyes are closed. Body, find out the most comfortable position of the body. Put in any position that your mind declares is comfortable. And we have been doing in a very simple way. Look at the neck joint. Feel the sensation. Sensation means now you raise your awareness. You feel the comfort and you experience the steadiness. Move the mind. Move the mind on the shoulder joints. Be there, feel the sensation, comfort and steadiness. Move the mind on the hip joint. Why we are doing it? So that we move to a little higher awareness of comfort. What is that comfort? You are settled completely. Physically, I'm repeating, physically you are settled completely. So that settling completely physically means you are, you have expanded yourself. Why, 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 why do you see that? Because the mind does not go back again and again to, to, to find the unease and discomfort and emotional dependence on the body. Oh, that is the reason, yes. So look at the hip joint, be there, feel, feel sensation, comfort, and steadiness. 
move the mind on the entire body. So when you see that when we move the mind on the entire body, it is all about raising your level of awareness. How simple it is to understand it. Not a big deal. So once we are physically settled, means I'm aware of the body, body is comfortable, very good. So then we go a little deeper. Then only we can go a little deeper. And that is why I say, yes, be care free, free from all the cares. Who cares? The mind. How the mind cares? By feeling, by images, by thoughts. They keep entering into the mind, unwelcome, uninvited. So our master says that just become aware means what? Like the traffic on the road. Don't get, don't get upset if any thought, good thought comes, bad thought comes, no issue at all. No issue at all. Simply, we are aware the thoughts are coming and going like the traffic on the road, like the birds are flying on the sky. That is why I've been using this these words. What? Thoughts are coming and going, thoughts are coming and going. Now, once the mind seems to be moving within here, here we can add the steps that can raise our level of awareness. What that means, we can move into a deeper state of relaxation. It is possible. One. And then with deeper level of relaxation, and that will help us to live into the higher self-awareness so we say look at the head and the neck so you pay just simply attention not making an effort the mind is moving on the head and the neck it is touching you are feeling the sensation and that sensation that sensation Relaxation is there and stillness is there. Move the mind on the right arm. Your mind is moving on the right arm. You are there. You feel the sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Sensation, conscious. Relaxation that settles the body a little deeper and that helps us to raise our level of awareness. Very good. Then what? Move the mind on the left, left. Left arm, be there. Okay.
sensation, relaxation, and stillness. That is also true. Move the mind on the rib cage in the belly. Sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Very good. We let us go a little deeper. Move the mind on the right leg, be there, feel the sensation, relaxation and stillness. Mind moves on the left leg, be there, feel the sensation, relaxation and stillness. The entire body. Move the mind on the entire body, sensation, relaxation, and stillness. Now, why the Buddha says, you know, as per the teachings, Buddha says, be aware of the breath. Do not focus on the breath means that you just casually watch the breath is going in and the breath is coming out. How simple it is. So you are not focusing on the breath casually. You are So you see that when the mind starts jumping onto the thought, you simply count maybe five. Breath goes in, in one, out one, in two, out two, in three, out three, four, five, and then stop the counting. Keep looking at the breath. When the mind, without any effort, intensively aware of the breath, you know what happens? It transcends the breath. You enter into the mind room. But it takes time. One has to do the practice regularly. Then it takes. Then it happens. Oh, then it happens, yes.
no worries if the mind is this my uh, unwanted unwelcome thought enters just become aware so when we are not aware we are living in low level of low self-awareness when we are aware oh, the thought has come okay let me count one two five and then stop it and you keep on maintaining awareness of the breath now these are the tools with a different uh, modifications are used in order to move the mind within and merge the mind to the real self. That is what we discuss today. So if you remember, unwanted thought has come, you're not getting carried away by any thought, you're living in higher awareness. What is such a simple way to understand? Continue living into that state. Do nothing. Remain as you are. So today's practice means that once you reach to the breath awareness and keep on, Keep on, continue extending awareness on the breath, bypassing the unwelcome thoughts, maintains your level of self-awareness, and then it expands. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Oh, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Oh, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your mind on the right hand. Your mind on the left hand, take your time, lift your both the palms, place it on your eyes, open the eyes inside, know your experiences, bring the hands down and know your experiences. Well, share what experiences now. <laughs> yes, what yeah, happened? Very calming. I feel very fine. Very fine. Very peaceful and, and are, uh, you quiet. are you clear today that you are not worthy of suffering? I'm so, what was it? 
Uh, I'm sorry. Are not worthy of suffering. Whether I'm worthy of suffering? No, not no. at all. No, no. I'm worthy of happiness. <laughs> yes, I'm worthy of happiness. <laughs> you know, we. Did you know at the time the birth that the falsua will be your honey? When? I'm sorry. At the time of the birth, did you know that the falsua will be your honey? No, I no, certainly no. not. I didn't know. <laughs> so I don't know even how many kids I will have. So you look at there are uncertain areas in our day-to-day -day life we catch it with an emotional dependence no i should not have been married i should have been married oh you should not have been my kid you should have been unnecessary unwasted over time and then we suffer that's right yeah and we are not worthy of suffering <laughs> <laughs> that is the problem. Yeah. 